Hi there, this is Dr. Joe with Mountain Journey. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at an old Stanley Bailey type number five plane that I found in my mountain property. I was cleaning out the uh, one of the pole barns and in the very back of the pole barn there was some rotten wood and some other things and on the dirt floor kind of half buried was this. This is a Stanley number five plane and you can see it is in absolutely terrible condition but there's a lot of life in this. All the parts are present, nothing's cracked and I think this can be turned into a very useful beautiful tool again that will be a pleasure to use. Let's get started. I think it's important to give credit where credit's due. I'd like to thank a number of people that I consider my mentors for these types of things. I built my first chair with Michael Dunbar. Great guy. Really helped me. Drew Langsner was an incredible inspiration. My brother and I spent a week with him making a Windsor chair and really understanding the art of green woodworking and country woodworking. Um, also, um, Rob Cosman terrific guy. I've spoken with him a number of times on the phone. I own quite a few of his tools. Really great. Great uh, inspiration for hand plane restoration. Matt Esley in England, really a comp very competent, great person. Interesting. Really good resource there. Um, the Wood Whisperer, of course, is good here in the U.S. and also stu Stubby Nubs, which is funny, but very useful and very helpful. So, Many people have been helpful for me and I want to give credit to them and thank them uh, for guiding me on this path. So let's take a look at this plane. You can see it has the front uh, knob or tote here, back here. It has the chip breaker, the blade, the adjustment lever, and the frog. The sole is intact and I don't see any big chips or cracks in the welding. So let's start to take it apart. So the first thing is let's take off this lever cap which is full of debris and then the blade. There's a lot of stuff in here. Then we'll put some penetrating oil for these screws in this part that is called the frog. And we'll put penetrating oil in those and in the back and see if we can get this to loosen up without breaking anything. My favorite type of penetrating oil is free all. I have no financial relationship with them. It just really works well. So we'll put this on all the moving parts and see if we can get those to move. I'm going to put this on a towel as well. I sprayed some of the free all on the chip breaker and the blade. That's that combination blade with the chip breaker. And I've got a special screwdriver for this made by Lee Nielsen that, nope. Not yet. It's not ready. And I don't want to break anything. And also we've got these nice Sheffield screwdrivers that fit really well into these screws for the plane. And they're not ready to go yet either. I'm going to heat this because I think heating it's going to allow this to uh, move a lot more easily. Get the little, put a little heat on it. It'll get things to move a bit. If we can expand the chip breaker behind it just a little bit, that screw should come out pretty easily. Ah. Not yet. <coughs> Oh, 
want to be sure that screw hasn't been peened over, which it looks like it might have. If that's the case, I may have to grind it off. Yep. You can see that. Looks like it's been peened over, so that's probably not going to move, unfortunately. I'll let this cool off on my vise. Let's see if the other parts are ready to go. Oh, beautiful. I mean, I think this has been in the dirt for about 20 years. But this free all, oh, both came off. I can't believe it. Really is nice. And I think our frog is going to come out here, which would be amazing. There's that screw and a washer. This screw and a washer. Oh, yes. So the frog came out. It was totally full of junk. Same thing with the body. But you can see it's all intact. Nothing's, nothing seems to be broken. A few pupa of larvae eggs or whatever this is. I don't even know. Some kind of bug. But we'll try to take the uh, knob and the toad off very carefully. These are brass screws. And, uh, and then take this to the wheel to the uh, wire brush that I have on the drill press. That cleans things up really nicely. Okay, just... I haven't put anything on these, but because they're brass, sometimes they'll go, Ugh, I don't believe it. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> there's, the, there's the brass part that you can see here. And there'll be a threaded rod right here that will take off. Probably have to put a little of our favorite free all around that. And then let's see if we can get the screw off the tote. Again, you need a perfect screwdriver for this. Ugh. I don't believe it. Okay, that's great. I'm surprised. But brass is pretty soft, so these brass parts, they come off. And then what we're left behind with is the steel threaded rod. And this is usually a steel screw. We'll see if we can take that off. Oh, I can't believe it. And there it comes. Huh. And then this will come off, and there's that threaded rod. That one's loose. Huh. That one's loose and just came right out. Unbelievable. And this one will come out. Oh, free all did it. And then there's the screw for the frog in the back. Just take out. And now we're just to our plain body. And we're going to spend some time on this and really tune it up. But let's take it to the drill press and the wire brush and start to get this thing cleaned up. Let's also see if we can take this frog apart. I put, a, I put some free all on the screw for the adjustment knob and I'm going to see if we can back it off of here which would be great I almost can't believe it it's coming off huh okay there's that and now we'll we'll get a punch and punch this yoke off, which is the adjustment yoke. And then we'll take the, yeah, this actually moves. We'll take this off as well. This is the adjuster. And then we'll have the entire surface of the frog that we can flatten here and flatten here and really tune this up so it mates with the, with the portions ground in the body so it has no chatter. And this is going to become a really nice plane 
And look, this screw comes out as well with some of that free all. Amazing. This is a really good product. And then we'll take this. Oh, amazing. The fact that it's coming apart just is great. It's going to make, make things a lot better for us. This part actually can come off also. We'll see once it uh, is a little more lubricated and spends a little more time. And then we'll punch out that pin. And typically we have to grind this off to get the adjustment lever off. But let's go to the drill press and start working on the body. Okay, I'm going to put some leather gloves on just to protect my hands from this. Put a little light on it. I've got my safety glasses on. And we'll start our process. I mean, look at that already. Nice. We might have to get some more orange paint and paint around that Stanley lettering. Yeah, maybe 20 years in the dirt. Probably wasn't the best for it, but I think we can bring it back. This lever cap is looking good. It's nice that the plane was intact, you know? Trying to put things together and finding parts for these old hand planes and other hand tools is really problematic. When I get something at a meet or some other area that I'm really trying to look at, I want to be sure that, I try to be sure that they're all intact and have all the parts. Because finding replacement parts is, it can, it can happen, but it's not easy. It's always better to get an old tool that's complete. Look how much nicer that looks already. It's just fantastic. And you can see why I use leather gloves, not nitrile gloves. I don't want to get my fingers ground off with this wire brush. Coming. So we'll continue this as well as, as these other parts and then look on the sole. We'll start like this and then we'll probably do some evapo rust just to get all the final rust off of it here. But I want to restore this to a nice polished surface and we might do it on a reference plate that has self-adhesive sandpaper because I'm going to truly flatten the, the uh, sole of this plane once I have the blade on it, the frog on it, everything tensioned up so I can get it uh, perfectly flat for use. I wanted to just show you how nicely the frog is cleaning up. You can see the uh, word Stanley now coming into view that are always on the uh, adjustment lever. But all these wear surfaces they really are shining up nicely. You can see that. Got a way to go. Okay, I wanted to show you how nicely the sole is cleaning up with this wire brush. Just working on It's actually quite good and probably the next step I'm going to do is flatten it with some uh, 
either wet dry sandpaper, adhesive back sandpaper on a reference plate, on a granite surface. There must have been some green paint in the life of this plane because there's some green paint showing through on the sole. We'll just continue cleaning this up and be back. So now we're going to use a softer wire wheel, wire brush. I just get the loose finish off of the, the tote and the knob. Get some paint stripper to finish it up. Take quite a few years of wear and tear off these guys, but they're intact. They're not broken. It's really nice. So I'm taking good care of them, especially the tote. So we'll get these re these prepared too and take a look at what we've done as far as the um, wire wheel and also I did some buffing on the brass parts. So here are the wooden parts we just looked at. The brass parts really polished up nicely as you can see. Nice and shiny, beautiful. Sorry about my fingers. The adjustment knob is nice. These screws, the other screws, I've uh, wire wheeled them carefully. The frog has uh, improved dramatically, but I still think we'll clean it up, soak it and uh, de-rust it. Then I'm going to take the yoke and the uh, adjustment lever off so I can perfectly flatten the, um, th this area where the blade sits and also these machined areas that fit on the base. The um, lever cap looks pretty good. Um, I may pound out this to really clean this up a little bit and then we'll, we'll paint it. And then the body, not bad, but it needs some work. So, you know, you can see we've uh, made a good beginning, a good start to this restoration. And again, fortunately, all the parts are here. We'll try not to lose any during this. And then the next step, we'll uh, work on cleaning these up even more. And also, fortunately, over time, this is, this is loosened and we're able to take the chip breaker off and the screw away from the blade and we'll tune these up over at the uh, wire brush at the drill press as well. So I'm going to try to pound this pin out. Very fine pin punch. There it goes. Not quite. Almost. Ah, there we can take the yoke out. And then we have the pin. That we can leave in place here. And just punch it back through when we're all done with the restoration. Okay, I've got the pin out and the yolks out. Now I've got the frog gently supported in the vise with um, some nice rubber protectors, some guards, so it can hold it nicely without marring it. <coughs> then I put a diamond. Uh, wheel on this Dremel Micro and we'll grind down this. At this point I'm just going to gently file this. I know it's a huge file but it's going to be very gentle with it.
That should allow me to see the pin. <coughs> we have here just a little more filing. Yeah, I think that's showing it right there. Yes, it is. So they must have peened it a little bit. I'm just going to try to knock it out. That goes. Yeah, it's going now. I don't want to crack the casting, so I'm being very gentle. There it is. So it's come out. We'll still use this pin. It'll fit right back in here without any issues. Now we can flatten this surface so the blade can ride on it without any chatter. So let's begin by flattening this face of the frog. We'll start with um, a 300 stone just, just to see where it is. We'll do this just for a few moments and we'll look at it. Yeah, so it's it's not very flat because you can see, let's see, certain areas are starting to come off and certain areas aren't. So that's good that we started with this grit because we need to take down the high spots <coughs> and get this all perfectly in line. So it's coming. So let's see. You can see now these areas are coming. It's coming along. So we'll continue. It was taking me so long on that whetstone that I went to this reference place, a plate of granite, extraordinarily flat, put some 120 grit, 3M or Porter cable, adhesive back sandpaper. And I just about got it where we want it. Let's take a look. That. So see, we want it to be shiny all the way to the tip, and it's just about there. Really, really close. So we'll continue this till we get it flat, and then we'll hone it up in the uh, higher grits. Okay, we've got it really nice. And you can see the shine. Now we just want to just hone it up a little bit. I love my Shapton stones. I love this. This is a 1000 grit. We're just going to tune it up here a little bit. Just be sure that we're not bringing any of that 120 abrasive down here to screw up my stone. I don't think we are. This is water with um, hone, gold, hone rate gold, recommended by Rob Cosman, who I respect a lot. I mean, there you go. You can see that all, all the way to the tip. We're looking good. Um, this is done. Now we just want to tune up these surfaces because th then we will use those as a reference to sand their mating surfaces on the body of the plane. So we'll tune these up here. Just get it. You can rock it right there. Take your time. see that nice thousand grit edge there and we'll do the same with this area but we'll just set it over on the side like it's sitting I 
and that's taking these rough grind marks off and we'll smooth it. We'll do that for a little while longer. I'm going to reflatten the stone. Okay, I'm tuning this up on the uh, One thousand grit trend diamond plate, and you can see that's good. Now we'll work on this. See how that's improving that rough grind? Let's flip it over here. Use the whole stone. pretty good. That looks pretty good. So we're good with these. We're good with this. This has a lot of flat surface. I might hone it just a little bit more. Being the obsessive compulsive guy I am. Almost got those grind marks out. It'd be nice to get them out. I would like that. Mm, they're gone in half. Half of it. Keep it flat. You can see they're virtually gone, so we're in good shape. Okay, now at this point, <clears throat> we can use this ultrasonic cleaner. I'm heating it up. I've got it at 43 degrees, going to 50. And we'll take all of our small parts and see if we can really, really clean these. fall through the mesh of the basket and yeah, they're trying to there we go and we'll just put that in there we'll add some turpentine to the mix because that's a real benefit it's a nice solvent Not an exact amount. That's probably pretty good. So some turpentine. And we'll turn it on. And let that work its magic for about five minutes and we'll take a look at all those parts. You can see already the solid brass. The solid brass screws for the toad and the knob. I've already polished those up. They are beautiful, truly beautiful. And then I've got some varnish and paint remover for the tote and for the knob. And we'll get to those in just a minute. Okay, here's everything out of the out of the wash. 
maybe just a little light scrape. Boy, these pieces just flawless. That's great. Yeah, nothing really to do here. Really good. The adjustment lever came out really nice. Might be a little rust on this. Maybe we'll run some of these things through the de-ruster. But, cleaned all the threads out. Gosh, pretty good. Pretty darn good. Maybe a little de-rusting. Look at how nice that is. And the brass adjustment knob, although I've been cleaning it up myself prior to that, really is quite good. Yeah. And these other screws. We'll probably take some of these pieces and do a little de-rusting with Evapo-Rust, which is a really great product, and give that a few hours, see how that turns out. I've scraped all the, or wire brushed all the, um, most of the lacquer off of these. There's a little bit left in these areas. We're going to use our paint thinner now to really take care of this, and then I'm going to sand these and re-varnish them. Okay, now we're up to the lever cap, or the lever cap. You can see I have been wire brushing this. This side is nice. This is nickel plated. But this side has lost a lot of its luster. It's rusted. And there's a lot of loss of the nickel plating. I'm going to replate this using electroplating methods. But before that, I think I'm going to take this to the sander and just take this surface off. The sides and the back are quite nice. So we'll just take this down to bare metal, have it very polished, devoid of grease. We'll clean that with acetone and we'll do some nickel electroplating to give us a nice finish on this lever cap. Okay, when you do things like sand this, there's no turning back, but I want this to look as good as possible. So we're going to sand the lever cap, bare metal, and then we're going to nickel plate it. So let's take it to the sander. And it's, it's coming off really fast, as I thought it would. Okay, that's all bare metal now. Now let's go up here a little bit. This is all bare metal now to here. Now we're going to do this part.
that's very nice. We'll just do this front edge just a little bit. Nice. So, we're ready to go. The sides are still intact. And so is the back. Sides and back are still intact. And this is now nice. We'll we'll find we'll improve this by polishing it a little bit and making it really, really nice and smooth. Okay, now we've got our parts in here. We'll start spraying these with our nice and thick paint remover. Get a nice coating on all these parts. Let it do its thing. Wear gloves and wear eye protection, please. Stuff is caustic, no matter how safe they say it is. So we'll just let this sit here for a while. 30 minutes to a couple hours, that's the recommendation. Okay, we're just going to lightly sand this with some 600 grit. I've got this, the uh, dust collector on, it's very loud. Light coating of oil to prevent surface rust. Okay, now we're going to take the main body, which I've got cleaned up. And remember, in a little bit, we're going to use the frog, put some self adhesive um, sandpaper on that, and we're going to sand down these four contact points that have been machined. But the only way to get them to match perfectly with the frog is to take the frog to this. And with either some grit or sandpaper, move it back and forth, and then it will seat perfectly. So we've got it pretty well cleaned up. There's some Japanning that's missing, but I've got that cleaned up. The sole has a lot of the rust off, as well as the sides. But we're going to really finish that up here. Treat the frog, the blade, the chip breaker, and all the small parts as well everything except the lever cap and the brass pieces so we use evapor rust straight very safe and you can use it again I've already used this once so we'll put that in there and I think I'm going to use a little bit more just to kind of cover it up, pour it all in there. Then we're done, we'll just basically bring, bring the, uh, pour this back in these containers and they last a long time. Okay, we're going to try to clean up these brass pieces even better, especially this one. We've got some Metal Care Brass and Copper Cleaner. Haven't used this for quite a while. Going to put some on some steel wool. Soak up in there, put some in here. And we'll just start scrubbing away. See if we can get this to be cleaned up. I think it's going to work. Take a look at that. Quite nice. So that stuff does really work. Now we're just going to rinse it off with some water. But there's a beautiful part now. 
All right, it's time to sharpen this blade. Let's see how it does. Remember, this surface has to be flat, and then this is the angle that goes against it. So I'm just going to see how flat this thing is by just rubbing out a 1,000 stone just for a moment. We're not going to flatten the whole back. We're going to basically just do the edge of it using that Charles Cosworth technique that Rob Cosman and others discuss. It really is a time saver. So, yeah, you can see the very edge is not getting polished, which is frustrating and because that's the money edge. Let's just come here and do this edge and see what happens when I do this. Nope, still the same. So you can see we're not sharpening to the edge. So we're going to now go up with this steel rule just to the edge of this and see if we can get just a very fine shiny edge right at the edge. I can see rust coming off. Well, it's starting, so we're, we'll flatten the stone and come back and do this some more. I like to keep the, the, the stones extremely sh flat um, because they're the most accurate in getting what we're trying to do, namely a really fine edge. Okay, we're going to try this some more. If I can't get that the shiny edge all the way to the end, we'll just have to take it to the grinder, bring it back, and then, then we're in good shape. Let's try it. See where we are. Hard to tell, but I think we're still at this area. So we're not we're not getting that nice flat edge that we want yet. We'll switch over here. Try to raise that little micro edge over here. This lifts it up less than a degree. Boy, is this a significant time saver. I may take this to the 350 grit diamond stone. Let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, I've been sharpening on this 300 grit diamond stone with this trend diamond abrasive lapping fluid. It works very well. And you can see now I've got this edge coming up, but not on the corners. I think it's a good idea for me to grind this back just a little bit. Then we'll have a complete polished or a um, shiny edge all the way from edge side to side. So I'm going to take this to the grinder right now. So I adjusted, I adjusted the table on the grinder so that this will fit pretty well. So. Let's just take a look and see what happens. And you can see that's right in the middle of the bevel, so that's quite good. Almost done. The 
just a little bit more at the edges. So you can see the edge, it's almost right, but not quite. We're going to grind it back just a bit more. I've got a small nick in my, <coughs> in my um, table here, I'm going to have to file that down. It's not very smooth, so we can continue. Light passes, don't burn the steel. Alright, I'm all the way across now on this surface. I just have to work a little bit on polishing that, but let's check it for square. We should always check our progress with the uh, square. And you can see I'm just a little high on this side. So we'll grind that one a little bit heavier. Very close. All right, so we're there. All right, let's take a look. So here's the back. We've got it polished right to the very edge. You can see you've ground this surface. Now we're going to sharpen this. So the back is flat basically to 300 grit. Now we're going to bring it up to 6,000 then 16,000. So here we are now sharpening on the 16,000. Just getting that edge perfectly polished up. Let's take a look at it. Oh, <laughs> pretty remarkable. So you see that shine? Look at that. That is highly polished. So that's good. Now we need to get this edge to match. Okay, the blade is sharp. Now what does that mean? When two perfect lines come together, here's the polished back that you can see. Then here's the edge. You can see the very fine edge, highly polished right at the end. So it's 25 degrees plus a degree. So that's what that looks like. That is sharp. Ready to go once we put it back together. All right, to get the mating surfaces of the frog and the body to meet, I put some self-adhesive sandpaper on these surfaces. And then Basically, rubbing these together 
really shines up. these surfaces so we know that this will sit very evenly without wobble and without chatter. Those actually look pretty good. These were machined after the Japanning was done and now they're nice and polished uh, because we've uh, we spent some time with the sandpaper and the frog so this is a really good strong uh, match now. Okay I've temporarily reassembled the plane I've got gloves on because I don't want to put any oils on the tote or on the on the knob. But I'm going to flatten the sole. I've got it tensioned up, properly uh, seated in here. You can see it's really looking pretty good. But let's get this sole, which is pretty pathetic right now, frankly. Look at all the rust and junk all over it. Anyway, but I, I've, I've wire brushed it so it's better. But let's let's start lapping this on this granite surface. There'll be a lot of debris that comes off of here. And we'll look at it and we'll see how good it is because this is the key. We need to have it pretty flat. You can see it really starting to flatten out and in front and behind the throat. That is really important. We're getting some here but not quite in these areas. So I'll vacuum this up and um, continue our flattening. Nice here, nice here, yeah it's getting there a little bit, let's, let's keep going. I'm putting considerable force on this to kind of move ahead with the project. Again the sole should only be flattened when it's tuned up, when it's tensioned up with all, with all the parts on there. Look now, we're getting this. This is good, it's starting to come here. So we'll continue this for a while. So it's, been, so it's been a few minutes. Here's a trick. We can use some magic marker. Kind of show us what we're doing, but again, the area in front of the uh, mouth is probably the most important. So let's see where we are with that. So it's coming. A little bit here is good. We gotta, we gotta continue to do this. I might put some new sandpaper on here and really get going. But this has been pretty used. I'm gonna do this again after we bake it. After we do the Japaning. But right now, I, I up the game from 120 to 80, 80 grit. And you can see really nice here. Nice behind the throat but not quite in front of the throat. That's the key. We need to get this region nice. I don't care so much about here in the back. That's perfectly okay. But right here in front of the throat, that's the most important. Almost a significant part of the whole sole is really nice and flat, but <laughs> the key element, the key part, not quite. We'll keep working on this. Okay, I've spent a lot of time on the 80 and now back to the 120 grit. And you can see beautiful polish here and it's actually pretty shiny right in front of the throat here. So I think we're in good shape. We'll do this again after we bake it, after the Japanning is applied. Now it's time to finish the handle, the tote, the knob, and the, the tote and the knob. Okay, let's take it apart and prepare it for... All the other things we're going to do. We're going to nickel plate the lever cap. We're going to put a nice finish on the tote and the knob. 
and we're going to Japan this area. Look how nice this looks. The nice brass parts. That was achieved by these products. This metal cleaner and then a brass protective coat. That should keep those looking good for years. So there's the knob. And here's the tote or the handle. Great. The only other part is the frog adjustment screw. We'll take that out right in here. And again, you can see the facets or the areas of contact of the frog and the body are great. I've reinstalled this capture point, the yoke, driven the pin back, and now we have the lateral adjustment and I fixed the little rotating knob so it rotates nicely. That's, that's to do a lateral adjustment for the blade. Look at how nice the brass parts look. Okay, time to finish these wooden parts. To prepare the handles for finishing, I'm sanding them. I'm using this Merca sander, but I'm starting with 220 grit, and I'm going with a very low speed. You can hear this, very low speed, because I don't want to change the profile of this, and I'm just being very cautious, and um, I do connect it to the, to the dust extractor, the uh, vacuum. Uh, so we're going to go two, 220, maybe 320, 400 to really get this, these nice and uh, sand it up. But again, careful not to change that, that classic profile. So, let's use some gel top coat. This is a general finishes satin wipe on urethane. Now look at that. Talk about an easy application, right? Well, that looks really lustrous. We'll wipe it down in just a minute. Let's put a coat on the knob. It's even coat. Get the excess off. We don't want it to drip. And let's wipe it with a clean rag. Alright, we'll let those dry. We now have two coats of the General Finishes Gel Top Coat, Wipe on Urethane. And you can see the beautiful lustrous color of this rosewood of the knob and the tote. They really look good. Now we're going to apply a coating of this Brie Wax. And then after that, I'm going to buff it and maybe put some Carnauba Wax on it just to really give it that luster. So we'll apply this Brie Wax, which I like very much, very liberally, with a cotton 
rag here. And then let this dry a little bit. And we'll buff it. They get a really good coating on there. Really liberally put it on, make it nice. And then we'll let those dry. So this has the Bree Wax on it. It's got kind of a dull coating. It feels nice, it looks pretty good. But we'll put some carnauba wax on this buffer look how that just shines it's beautiful and we try to buff with the grain see how that's just taking that beautiful getting that beautiful shine going on there this tool will be a pleasure to use. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Oh, it feels so good too. So yeah, let's just get the whole thing buffed up. And then of course with use, it'll get a nice patina. Get your normal hand oils on there. Boy, pretty that pretty good. Ooh. Don't do that. Yeah, that's nice and shined up. Feels great. I've already buffed the knob. See the knob is looking good. Here's the final restored tote and knob. These are beautiful rosewood. When I was sanding these, even with dust collection, you can smell that fine sawdust, which is of course a bit of a safety hazard, but it has that beautiful rose smell from which these are named rosewood. These are not walnut, as someone has said in one of the videos. These are rosewood. They are beautiful, tropical hardwood. They have been finished with multiple coats of a combination oil and polyurethane. <coughs> three coats, actually. And then waxed with carnauba wax on a buffer. And they have a beautiful luster, a shine, and they just feel wonderful to your hands. I did sand these up to 600 grit before I um, applied the finish and they really look great. When, they're, when this plane is used a lot they'll even have a more lustrous deeper tone as the oil from hands and others create that beautiful patina. But this is the final knob and tote restoration of a Stanley hand plane, a number five hand plane. Okay, we've got the chip breaker nice and polished, but let's hone this back edge so it has a perfect contact with the blade. We'll do this on our diamond stone. Just getting a nice shiny edge right at the very edge. Let's take a look at that. So we want to make an edge here where this is perfectly, perfectly lining up, putting equal pressure on the, on, the, on the blade to prevent any chips from getting between the chip breaker and the blade and stabilizing it. Almost. Now we can see that. See that edge? Oh yeah, nice. Not quite complete, but almost. So we'll finish that up. 
and this chip breaker is ready for an install and it will it will back the blade up really nicely so see that edge okay the way we put the chip breaker back on the blade is we look for the Stanley logo because that's going to be up the screw goes into the hole and then it is brought back around let's snug it just a little bit and then we want the back of the chip breaker boy that was just about it just to be right at the very edge of the blade so that supports the blade and we'll tighten it down alright that's secure so the mating surface of the frog needs to fit perfectly with the same mating surface of the body so we've put some sanding paper on this and moved it back and forth and I've also flattened this on a honing stone now we're going to do the opposite I'm going to take some sandpaper pieces and put them on the contact points here and move the frog across it so that's going to now really hone the and you can see look <clears throat> there's some metal coming off see that so this is honing the frog to fit perfectly with the body. That will eliminate chatter and make this into a much finer tool. So I've been sanding the lever cap now from 240 to 320 to 400 and now to 600. This is 600 grit. Very shiny, very polished. Okay, we're going to electroplate the lever cap because all of the nickel on the surface is gone. It's still present on the back and on the sides, but it had been rusted, so I sanded it all off. And now we're going to do some nickel electroplating to make this truly authentic. So during the restoration of this hand plane, we spent quite a bit of time making the electroplating solution and that is featured on a different video for time's sake feel free to please look at it and we'll actually show the process of nickel plating the lever cap you can see that lever cap really taking on a beautiful shine we'll just keep buffing it here for a little while until we get it where we really want it okay we're done with buffing it you can see it's got a fantastic luster beautiful shine in comparison to the nickel plating on the back was still a little bit dull but intact this buffed up pretty nicely very smooth and even now we'll put that beautiful Stanley orange in the background here to make this lever cap complete okay let's uh, clean that up with some acetone to be sure there's no wax or um, 
any of that uh, buffing compound. <laughs> A little bit more. You can see the little remnants of the orange that have come out now that we've cleaned everything up. Now we're going to paint that. Once I get it perfectly clean. So we've got this brilliant orange color. So we're just going to try to very delicately put in here. to get any overlap which will clean up of course we'll just paint this so we've painted that a little bit over we'll let that dry and we'll just buff a little bit of extra excess off of there this is the Stanley lever cap after it's been restored you can see the fine orange paint and we've cleaned up the letters really nicely and the beautiful luster and shine from the nickel plating. This lever cap is absolutely as good as or better than original. Still with the original plating on the back and on the sides. I can't resist. I've seen some restoration um, videos where the restorer actually took a file to create this this line I mean all that is is where the lever cap strikes the body of the uh, or the, this this small lever strikes the body of the uh, lever cap creating that indentation it's not a desirable um, addition it it's what occurs when the thing um, basically wears in and you're you're working with it so it's not the way it came originally but it's uh, it occurs and it creates that little crease or that little indentation where this lever strikes the body of the lever cap. So I've cleaned this plane up a lot. <clears throat> we flattened the sole um, initially. And now we're going to try to restore the Japanning on this. I'm going to bring this close. Please note, a lot of the Japanning is absent here, yet in some of these areas it's still present absent present it's very difficult to just put on the japanning in these smaller areas it's always better to clean up the entire surface and japan the entire um, hand plane base so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a friend of mine's and sandblast this in his sandblast cabinet take all the japanning off then japan the entire inner surface of the plane body Let's see so we're at Johnny Benson's uh, race shop and he's been very kind to let us use his industrial strength sandblaster and Johnny's my good friend and happens to be my wife's cousin so famous NASCAR driver and Speedweek commentator so we were in luck. He's taken the plane uh, base and taped it to protect these important machine surfaces that I've already prepared so we're not going to injure those while we remove the remaining japanning on the inner surface of this plane body. So let the, here we have the uh, plane body inside the sandblaster, the, uh, the, the nozzle, and uh, it's foot controlled. So we're going to start trying to sandblast and clean this up. You can get pretty close, too. So yes, you can see already how that's cleaned that up. Okay, I'll get closer. Wow, that's good. Let's go up to the main part of the body. I'm going to turn it around.
see the sandblasting did a very nice job on the plain body now, removing all the residual japanning. We've taped off these parts. Unfortunately, we did not tape off these rub surfaces, which need to be basically rehoned, but that shouldn't take long. So I've hooked up sandpaper to the wear surfaces on the frog, and we're going, we're going to polish these mating surfaces to prevent chatter. So I've got the sandpaper now on the faces and we'll spend a few minutes polishing this and you can see the metal coming up on the on the sandpaper here. Okay I've spent quite a bit of time doing this and you can see how the cast iron is coming up on these pieces of um, sandpaper and now we can see the nice reflective surfaces of the bearing surfaces where the frog will sit and they've really come up really nicely look at all the sandpaper I've gone through this has been quite a process but that's what you need to really really get it nice okay we've gotten these surfaces nice and true now let's Let's do a little more polishing on the frog itself by putting sandpaper on these wear surfaces. So we'll go through the same process. Which will polish up these surfaces some more for the perfect match, for, for the perfect fit to avoid chatter. During the restoration of the hand plane, we used two recipes to make japanning and made a japanning formula that seemed to be the very best for us. That's been thoroughly described and then gone through in a different video. Please refer to that for the sake of time and we'll continue on with the Stanley hand plane restoration, the number five with Dr. Joe. This mixture of the Seinfeld's liquid asphaltum and the Swedish cold pressed linseed oil seems to really have delivered a nice consistency that's thick yet runny. So you can kind of see that here. I think this is going to be the one. Let's just quick clean this up with some acetone on this shop towel. There's some debris in here. You got a little surface rust that I cleaned up with the wire wheel. Now I just want to ensure that it's really clean and ready to go. There are many brushes you can use to apply this. I'm going to put this, apply this with a an acid brush and try to get a uniform coating on it. I know the vertical surfaces are going to be a problem, but we'll see. I want a pretty, pretty nice even coat here. We don't want to paint the machine surfaces for the frog, so we'll stay away from those. And we're going to clean this up when we're done by getting all of the japanning off of the front edge and the sides, but we're going to leave it on the back edge. That's the authentic, that's the authentic appearance. Okay, here we go. I think it's ready to go into the oven for some baking. I'll do my best to keep it level to get a nice coating on here. So we'll bring it outside to the oven. I'm baking it outside in a toaster oven 
it didn't quite fit. It's at an angle, so I elevated on the cooking thermometer or on the um, oven thermometer and then I li lifted the other end up to keep it nice and level. We'll bring it up to about 250 for an hour and see how it looks. So we have the plain body in the toaster oven <clears throat> and now we're heating it up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour. And I've got the oven thermometer in there and the temperature is going up quite well right now. So our first baking with the Japaning, the asphaltum, great success. Take a look. Beautiful color. That perfect brown black color, nice and shiny. Really looks good. Now of course I got some on some of these areas we're going to get off. You can see that I got a little bit. But now I've rigged up my toaster oven so I can lay this flat so it shouldn't flow. And we'll put another coat on here and I think our Japaning will be done. I did bake it to 250 for an hour and then let it cool down. Went up to 300 for an hour, let it cool down. 350 an hour and let it cool down. And 375 an hour let it cool down and it's excellent so it looks like it's really cured well we'll put another coat on and repeat the heating process and to, to bake this in all right let's put another layer of this asphaltum and cold pressed boiled linseed oil we'll stir it up Just, just apply it. It stayed on the vertical surfaces really well. <laughs> Trying to keep it off the machine surfaces. So we can keep those nice for the contact with the frog. I'm sure I'll have to redo that a little bit. Get the vertical surfaces first. Then the horizontal surfaces. And of course, being authentic, the end is black. Is japanned whereas the front is not nor are these sides which we're going to tune up in a little bit so we'll bake this here in a second so here it is it fits in there nicely it is a little bit of a tight fit so it requires a bungee cord just to hold it nice and snug and we'll fire this up to start with 250 and we'll run it for an hour Well, I am so pleased. We've now finished the Japaning. I've done two coats of the mixture, which is the Senfelder's Spaltum. Kind of difficult to read. There you go. And the boiled linseed oil. And look at how beautiful that turned out. Can you see that really nice shine? that luster, that classic black-brown coloration, even on the sidewalls it turned out really nicely. It's nice and hard, it's dry, There's the, it's, it, it's been baked. I baked it up to 400 degrees for an hour and this really really took well. Two coats of the, of the uh, Japaning and then we've got a truly authentic beautiful um, coating on the inside of this which is rust preventative but now I've just got to clean up a little of the overlap here and a bit on the base which I'll do and also get back to these four machined points for the frog and we'll put this baby back together and see how she does Okay, the Japaning's been done. Now we're going to clean up the base and the sides 
using this 120 grit. <coughs> get the excess depending off and trust me I did that for a lot longer than you see but just for demo now the japanning is off the base is nice again the sides are nice and we'll clean up the front we'll sand it like 240 grit and these top edges but we'll leave the back black because that's the authentic Stanley plane. We're going to sand with the Merca sander these areas. I'm going to put my dust collection on. It's going to get noisy. I have, I have hearing protection on and eye protection. 240. Cleaning up nicely. That last little bit of the panning on the side, clearing that up. We'll finish all the way around, except leaving this again for the authentic look. Well, we've reached the reassembly stage. I'm so excited. I've taken some sandpaper to the to the facets or the feet of the frog and sanded this back down restoring that so that's a perfectly mated machine surface there was some japanning on it it's all off we've taken the 180 and 240 grit sanding the edges and the front leaving the rear getting the sides cleaned up and the bottom once it's all together We'll tighten everything up and then reflatten the surface with it under tension to give a true flat sole, and then we'll put it to use. Okay, let's put it together. Because we want this to last, we'll take a little three in one oil as well. Just put it on the threads of these threaded rods. Those placed. Take our nice polished brass screws and set those in. I'm going to use a bigger screwdriver that fits it more perfectly. Oh, that looks nice. Now we'll put the capture screw in for the frog here, the frog adjustment screw. Of course that goes in really easy. <laughs> Too much coffee today, Joe. run it in and out a few times so it's nice and loose. Just be sure there's no japanning on it. Then I run it all the way to the end. Back it out. Put a little bit of lube on it. That should be good to go. Okay. Well, that's ready to receive the frog. We're going to lubricate slightly these little facets, just a touch, so that they can glide and a little bit on this capture screw. Also, I already put the plain blade adjustment on, but I didn't lube it. I want to lube that a little bit. Take much. We'll 
drive it in so the plane's retracted. And I'll put a drop of oil where the where this comes in contact with it, as well as the lateral adjustment lever, which we've gotten loosened up and it spins, which is nice. It wasn't spinning initially. Get the excess oil off of there. Just need a teeny. Now there's nothing in our way. There we go. I can see the black coming off. Make it even. Okay, I've got done. I'm done filing it, and we can take a close up of that edge. So probably the easiest way to assemble the frog is to put the two screws in it, then just drop this in, and the screws will probably line up. That one did. Yes, and that one did. So we'll just lightly screw those down. Not too tight, because we want to move the frog forward. Because we want to put the edge of the frog right at the that pl that flat that I just spent time filing. So we use the screw, the frog adjusting screw, which is narrowing the throat for a finer shave, but also lining these edges up. Just like that. And we'll tighten these down. Then I'll replace the lever cap screw. Which will tighten once we have the blade in place. We'll tighten down those frog screws. And then we'll get ready to put on the tote and the blade. Okay, let's put the tote on. Trying to not, I don't want to mar the brass part, I want to keep the screwdriver nice and nicely inset into the groove. Good, that's nice and tight. Okay. The blade in place. Put the chip breaker on. Wow, we have a restored plane. Let's zoom out. The Stanley number five that was found half buried in the dirt in the end of the pole barn has been restored. It has a beautiful knob and tote, fully nickel plated lever cap, fully japanned body. The brass has been restored to a really good condition and I think it's ready to flatten the sole 
and then take this for a drive, see if we can uh, plane some wood. Let's do that. We've already done a preliminary flattening and I've retracted the blade so there's no chance that that's going to touch this. Everything's put back together, everything's tensioned up. Let's see what this, let's see what we've, what we've got here. Huh. So it's shining the whole front and this piece. We'll put some magic marker on that just to be sure what's being taken off. So I put some magic marker on here and we'll flatten it. Wow, it's almost all gone. You can see the most important parts here and right in here. So <laughs> I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. So the first thing we'll do is we'll advance the blade. And we'll look down the sole. Then we'll adjust the lever. To be sure what we see is equal. Then we'll back it up. And then we'll start planing, advancing it just a small amount each time. Moving that blade forward just a little bit with my finger and dialing it in. Must have really pulled it back. Oh, here it comes. There we go. Pulling those full thickness shavings off. Beautiful. Man. So there you go. That is the restoration of the Stanley number no. five plane. It's beautiful. We've taken care of the wood. We've refinished that. We got rid of all the oxidation and rust on the lever cap and nickel plated it, painted it. We've wire brushed and tuned up all the parts. Got the brass shining brightly, including this adjustment knob. We've japanned this, made the japanning solution, painted it, baked it. Now we've tuned it up. The bottom is flat. It's been tuned up with everything attached and tightened. This has become a joy to use as I predicted it would be. I'm very pleased with this. So this finishes the Stanley No. 5 Plane Restoration. This is Dr. Joe with Mountain Journey. Please subscribe. Please click like. You can click the bell and be notified of any subsequent videos that are coming. And please comment. Stay safe.